from Bell. And um, mm -hmm. and I think uh, I also want to thank the rest of you too because uh, it doesn't matter how long you've been in danza. You know, a lot of us have been interested in our culture even before our interest in danza or before, you know, even coming across that component of it, that aspect of it. So I want to thank you all for that, you know, for carrying that fire of interest, you know, it's, that's beautiful. Uh, and I see myself as a long, as a lifetime student as well, you know, and I'm sure I always learn things from others and uh, I'm open for that. So with that said, I want to say too that what we're going to discuss today and, you know, I don't know, maybe another day or two and we'll see how, how it goes, uh, how you guys decide. Um, is I want you, also want you to think of it as it's not like absolute knowledge either, right? Uh, I think uh, I've learned from a variety of individuals and I've done my own research for many years too. I've been at Dansante for 25, 26 years, I think. Um, I've been doing danza. I think it was 94 when I first started dancing. Um, and in 98, we started our own Calculi, uh, and Nahuake, we're in Pacoima. Um, and we've been doing that, you know, since 98, you know, steadily till now. And, uh, and as far as like the calendar information, uh, in 97, 96, I started going to Mexico to the University Nahuatl. They, have a, they had a university in, in uh, Morelos, Mexico. And it was led by these teachers, um, uh, Marta Ramirez Oropesa, and, and Maestro Leiva, and Maestro Lalo, uh, Isabella would teach about medicine. And I learned a lot about how to, how to calculate with the calendar counts. And, and I got a lot of the native perspective on that uh, in, in those trips, you know, in those studies. Because I think I always liked our history since I was a young man. But I will read the official version of history, you know, the one that's documented in history books and, you know, uh, which is kind of, uh, you know, which reflects a European perspective, you know, saying it that, put, put it that way. So uh, I, I started attaining our own indigenous perspective, you know, like uh, mid, mid to late 90s, you know. So since then, I've been developing uh, that, that outlook and trying to communicate and revise history accordingly. Uh, I'm currently working on a book the Tonal Mashot, or what they call the Aztec calendar. Um, so that's really helped me a lot because I did more research into it, into the topic. Um, I know Vero and others, uh, you know, work the calendar counts as well, which is, which is beautiful. And I also use the correlation that she's mentioned, Arturo Mesa Gutierrez. I had the privilege of studying with him as well in Mexico. Uh, he has a home in Marinalco, Mexico, and a, and a home in Mexico City. And I, I was able to visit his home a few times and uh, meet him out there in, in DFN, Mexico City, to take classes with him that he also did in public. Um, I read all of his literature that he produced. Um, so, you know, I'm also, you know, I, that's the correlation that I think is most accurate because there's others, you know, and I don't mean to demean or insult anybody else's calculations or correlations, but it seems to be the most, uh, you know, precise, at least in my, in my perspective. So with that said, um, I'm not going to talk, I guess, today about like actual symbols and the days and things like that. I was thinking they're bringing attention to, to the sunstone, you know, what they call the Aztec calendar, um, and kind of talk about it, you know, starting with the center, maybe work our way out a little bit. Um, I, and we'll just see how far we get, you know, we'll have a little discussion, maybe about an hour or so, you know, and uh, with questions and things like that. And just, you know, we could share. And also I want you to feel comfortable enough to see this platform as a dialogue, as a discussion. Uh, so if you have any questions, um, you know, I'm, up, I'm open to them. Or if you have another angle that you've learned from someone else, uh, I'm also definitely interested in that because that's uh, it's one of my passions, you know. Um, so I don't know, am I able to share that all or, um, Yes, let me, let me set it so, okay, yeah, you can share your screen. Is that what you're talking about? Yes, please, okay. thank you. Um, so let me, uh, first I wanna like, this is, um, I think all of us should know about this, this resource we have here. Um, if you Google Piedra del Sol, as you see up here in the top uh, tab, Piedra del Sol, 
and you and you and you put a as it says here google arts and culture when you google that it takes you to this tool i love this tool so much because as you can see this is the the tonal mayor or the aztec calendar here and um i can uh go to any part of it you know for example i could look at this little symbol here and i could like uh you know zoom into it you know and, and check out this symbol with with great detail uh you know you can go to any part uh of, of, of the stone and and just really uh enjoy it you know with with much detail are you guys able to see that yeah yeah okay um so this is a resource that i think uh you know if you guys are interested even just looking at it or saying hey what is that symbol right there you know you can like zoom into it and really uh look at, at, at details up close uh perhaps even better than when you're standing there because i've been to the actual museum where they have it the museo de antropología in mexico and it's up on the wall uh and uh you could see it you enjoy it but you can't really like zoom into like these glyphs like you could on this tool and uh i think this i think this tool actually comes from the museo de antropología i think it's something that they created um, but i found it on, on like i said piedra del sol uh, Google Art, Google Art um, and Culture, like it says up there. Uh, that something that you might want to jot down just to have a uh, clean images, right, of the actual stone. Because there's a lot of replicas out there. Um, some of them have errors in them, you know. But this is like the actual stone, so I, I recommend this one. Um, so I wanted to start with the central face here. The central face here, um, most resources identify it as, as Tonatiu, as a sun, right? And it's, and it's like an anthropomorphic representation, so human-like representation of the sun, right? And this central face, uh, most people say it's the sun. Now, when I started studying with Maestro Arturo Mesa in Mexico, he started talking about the possibilities of it being Tlaltecutli, which is um, a concept of the earth, I guess we can call it that. I'll talk about Tlaltecutli in a moment. Uh, but so I just want to put that out there that although most thoughts behind this are saying it's uh, the sun, Tonatiu in the center, there is that other school of thought that's saying it's Tlaltecutli, like a concept of the earth, right? Um, now I'll tell you my take in a moment, right? But uh, I want to first kind of walk you through a couple things. Let me uh, let me switch uh, to this um, presentation here. Uh, can you guys see the PowerPoint from there? I mean, we're good, or no? Are we still on the last image. Yeah. So what you have to do is you have yeah, to. Yeah. Let I'll stop sharing and then bring it back because sometimes that 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 does it. Yeah, because you have to select what screen you want yeah. to share. Yeah. So are we good now? Yes okay so here like uh oh another thing are we good in english or does anybody need spanish we're good in english pero you think que si hace falta español tanya sí para mí sí para usted sí okay sí perfect okay uh so this central mm -hmm. face here that i was talking to you uh i kind of take the take i think it, it um it might come a solar representation, but at the same time, it has like that duality of the earth, right? Pues este rostro, donde muchos dicen que es el sol, es una representación del sol, yo alego que, y también hay, hay personas que piensan que es un concepto de la tierra, yo alego que quizás tiene un poco de las dos, ¿verdad? Y lo que queremos ver en adelante. So, um, This sculpture on the side, this is a Tlalteculi sculpture. And the reason that some say, look at this tongue that, that uh, the sun one has, the sunstone, right? And the earrings that it has, they're very similar to the ones we see here in Tlalteculi, right? So there's a study by uh, Doris uh, and Hayden. And Doris and Hayden, uh, they wrote about that the central piece of the, of the sunstone or the Aztec calendar, they said that it, they argued that it was Tlaltecutli. 
And let me tell you what they said. They said that Tlanteculi was like a solar and an earth entity. So like one being that kind of had that duality, right? And let me explain what they meant by that. They, they according to our, uh, one of the legends of our ancestors, they feel that every night the sun when it sets is getting eaten by the earth, right? As the sun is setting, it's getting eaten by the earth. And every morning the earth is giving birth to the sun, right? So it's like this, this, this constant cycle of being eaten by the earth and then at the same time is, is being birthed by the earth. So that, that earth aspect, that solar earth relationship, that's what, uh, what uh, Doris and Haydn argue this Tlalteculi, you know, so they, they feel it's like a solar terrestrial uh, entity, like a, you know, a being in that way. Entonces estoy explicando de que hay unos historiadores Uh, Doris y Hayden, y ellos alegaban que esta figura del centro del calendario azteca, que es como esta que está a la derecha, que es una representación de la tierra. Y hay una leyenda indígena azteca o mexica que dice que el sol pues se mete, cada vez que se mete el sol es que la tierra se lo está comiendo. Y cada mañana la tierra está pariendo, dándole vida al sol. Entonces esta relación solar te terrestre es lo que describen como Tlalteculi. Entonces, Tlalteculi sale siendo no más un aspecto terráqueo, terrestre, sino también es un aspecto como terrestre solar. Esa relación, interacción que está entre, entre el sol y la tierra. Entonces, uh, Doris y Hayden alegan que esta figura en el centro es uh, un símbolo de la tierra, no del sol. O, 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 o más bien, terráqueo solar. So, better said, I think they're arguing that it's like a solar terrestrial uh, concept. Now, um, There's more pictures here of Tlalteculi. Hay otras imágenes de Tlalteculi aquí. Y se está comparando a, al centro del calendario azteca. So we're looking at it. Now, look at the side of the calendar here. A los lados, estos círculos rojos, están mostrando unas garras. So it's showing some claws, right? Now, if you notice up here in the center, Tlalteculi, the center picture up here, has big claws too. Very similar to the ones that are represented. So, Hating and Doris, again, they use this as evidence. They say, well, these are the same claws that Tlalteculi has. And we see them here uh, in the solar uh, representation here. And in the central representation of the, of the Aztec calendar, we see those claws. So they argue that it's likely Tlalteculi. Entonces, ellos alegan de que estas garras que están aquí al lado de la cabeza según del sol o de Tlalteculi, que son garras de Tlalteculi. Como vemos aquí en la foto de medio, se ven las garras de este concepto terráqueo de Tlalteculi, ¿verdad? Este, y dicen ellos pues que son, a, son ejemplos de evidencia de que la figura central es Tlalteculi, esa, esa entidad solar terráquea. So they argue that, that those claws are like more evidence of it being Tlalteculi. And I just want to say Tlalteculi, Tlali is earth, Teculi is like a, a, a position, a cargo, like a, a representative. So it's like the, the representative of the earth, right? Uh, I don't like to use the term Lord of the Earth because that's like from the feudal system. It's like a different structure, right? Uh, so it's like a representative of the Earth. And Tlateculi, uh, a lot of times is associated with like decomposing, right? Uh, the Earth, when things die and they're, and, they're, and they're buried or they're left on the Earth, they start getting broken down by the Earth. You know, that's why right here, in this, look at this top figure. You can see little like little insects, little critters right here on the, on the top, you know? You see like... Uh, you know, little uh, millipedes and uh, you see different little insects that are right here in the head, you know, like, like it's like it's tocado, like it's like it's, 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 it's copili, is uh, all these little different little critters that it has. Entonces, la tierra como Tlalteculi es el encargado de la tierra. Eso es lo que significa el nombre Tlalteculi. Y su, su tocado, su copili, el, el plumaje como usamos los danzantes, pero son como animalitos de la tierra, como cien pies, como niños de la tierra, otros insectos que tiene aquí como en su tocado. ¿verdad? Y son los animalitos que descomponen a lo que ya, ya se murió. Cuando, cuando algo muere, vegetal o animal, la tierra lo va descomponiendo. Y también dicen que por eso tiene sus garras, Tlalteculi, porque va deshaciendo toda la materia orgánica ¿verdad? y animal. So Tlalteculi is said to have that, that, those claws because it's breaking down all that organic matter, you know, organic and animal, uh, vegetable and animal matter. Pero, 
también we have uh, we also have that solar look at this look at what like, this, look at the sculpture it has this bra tiene como la escultura tiene como esta ceja roja verdad que estoy ilustrando aquí y si vemos acá este códice esta pintura en, en un libro ancestral Donatius el que tiene la ceja esa pintura facial así when we look at that, that facial paint in the ancient books like the codices like there's a codice of Borgia we can see that Donatius has that mm -hmm. type of facial paint you know Donatius has like that like if we look at like you know uh, Donatius has that and we see that this sculpture here it has it as well you can see it here in stone it's etched right there you can see a little that gives us like that solar Donatius component right the headband if we look at the headband I'm sorry, let me go back a little bit. Uh, hold, on, hold on, sorry. If you look at Donatius' headband, look at this codex picture. The headband uh, has like these, these uh, gold little discs, these gold circles right there, right? The gold circles. And then right in front of the headband, he has some kind of precious bird or a precious jewel on top, some precious type of jewel. Now if we look at this, this view here in the Aztec calendar, look at this face. You see these two round things in the sides, those are like, those are stone representations of those of these of these golden discs or, or circles and that center there is like a type of jewel flowery jewel that it has in the center like a decorative piece right so that's like a little bit another idea that gives us like hey this might be donatius headband you know like the solar headband that 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 is represented here uh in this face in the center because aparte aquí también tenemos que esta representación del sol en los códices Tiene su, su, su cinta, su mecate, Ishkwameca, y tiene círculos, rodajas así de oro. Y aquí en esta escultura vemos que también tiene rodajas, como si fuera parte de esa, de esa, de esa cinta ¿no? que usa. Y en, y en medio tiene pues a, a, como un tipo de joya, floreado, algo, una decoración preciosa. Aquí como en el códice también tiene su, su decoración preciosa. ¿no? Entonces también aquí el pelo de, de esta representación del sol está como lacio, como lisito, derechito y lacio, y que también aquí vemos el pelo en la escultura que lo tiene lacio. Entonces podemos decir que la parte de abajo nos da como una representación terráquea, terrestre. So we can kind of almost say that the top part of this face, like from the nose up, is like, has like little solar insignias, solar representations, and the bottom part, it kind of has that Tlalteculi aspect that we were talking about a moment ago. So it kind of has that duality. So, uh, you know, I could see where um, Doris and Haydn kind of get that conclude that it must be this, this solar uh, terrestrial entity, right? Entonces, um, por eso es que Doris y Haydn en su estudio este, alegan que quizás esta figura central tiene que ver con esa, esa entidad terráquea solar. Does anybody have any questions before we move on? Una, una pregunta o algo? So okay. are you are you saying then the that the conclusion is that it's both a solar and an earth entity at the same time? Well, you know, I think uh, I think I see where they're coming from, right? I think most most books and most historians are gonna say it's a solar representation, you know. But I, I can see where Doris and Hayden, they're they're study wasn't that popular is not as, as as diffused as much but i like to bring attention to that because uh we will come across that argument uh, at the end of the day i'm more inclined that it's a solar representation of donatio and uh, i'll explain that you know as we get along go along so i'm more inclined towards it being uh donatio you know solely donatio yeah and this is uh la pregunta Este, yo pienso, yo estoy presentando lo que es, lo que historiadores dicen de este, de este rostro. Lo más popular es de que es una representación solar, pero hay estudios que, que alegan que puede ser terráqueo, ¿verdad? De la tierra. Pero yo también, como lo expliqué un poco, lo voy a explicar un poco en adelante, yo también me inclino de que es un rostro del sol, de Tonatiu. Y lo, yo explicaré por qué pienso eso. Anybody else? Any other questions? Could it be someone completely different, like a Tonatecutli uh, or something, some some random thing that uh, people haven't thought of or a combination of it? 
I think it could be, right? I mean, there's always possibilities, but I think the fact that it has this bra right here, there's like this, this, uh, this, like I'll call it a uni bra for right now. You know, uh, I think uh, our ancestors were very careful with like with the facial paint. You know, nowadays we see dancers or we see people dance and they go all out with their facial paint. But ancestrally, the facial paint it really communicated like the concept that was being celebrated or the person that had that facial paint, what kind of energies they had, you know, with, with nature and with, with the astronomy around them, around their calendar dates. So seeing the insignias, like the symbols that it has, uh, I'm, I'm, in, I'm inclined to, 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 I think there's more evidence of it being solar and some kind of like the uh, evidence that we can argue with, uh, you know, argue for as opposed to other concepts that, like let's say someone said, oh, that's a corn uh, concept, uh, Centel. Well, there's really no corn, you know, there's really no insignias that Centel has. Or oh, that's Shipetotec. Well, Shipetotec has facial paint that has lines going downward, you know, and it's different. So uh, that's where I'm kind of thinking, using the evidence that we have from the codexes and, and other studies, I think uh, what's best defended is that the solar representation. and and I also understand that the terrestrial, the Tlateculi argument, because I could see some of the insignias, you know, like the tongue and the earrings and the and the beaded necklace that Tlateculi carries. But you know what, brother? Uh, <clears throat> that doesn't mean it can't be, you know? I mean, if, if some other evidence surfaces later, then we'd have to all correct our, our outlook, you know? Um, but thank you, that's, that's a great, uh, great Now, this centerpiece, uh, right here we see a solar ray. Aquí arriba vemos un rayo solar. And if we get to this count, we could talk about it later, but some other day. But this is this symbol here is like a Venus count, right? It's a Venus count, time count. And then these little feathers down here, these are like moon feathers, right? It's a representation of the moon, right? So, um, but this arrangement, like this ray, and then this back of it, this back of it right here, that's very typical of an arrow, right? An arrow has a, a, a tip, and then the arrow in the back has what they call a fletching. It's what gives an arrow balance and stability when you shoot it. If you shoot an arrow without the feathers in the back, it'll just drop because it'll be uh, the point will be too heavy. So you, you need these feathers in the back, which they call fletching. You need this fletching in the back to, to give stability uh, to that arrow. And um, so this is like, a, and, I'll, and I'll explain uh, why I, I, I'm looking at this as a, some type of arrow, uh, heat arrow, right? And I'll, I'll discuss that in a moment. Entonces, esto aquí, este terreglo, vemos un rayo solar aquí arriba. Y acá abajo, es, este cuadrito con los cuatro o cinco puntitos, es, un, es una cuenta de Venus. Si llegamos a ese anillo, lo, lo platicaremos con detalle. Y estas como plumitas aquí, que están acá abajo, son, uh, es un símbolo lunar. Son plumas lunares, ¿verdad? Pero yo estoy explicando de que una flecha siempre tiene su, su punta y también tiene atrás uh, las plumitas que van en la, en la flecha, ¿verdad? Y sin esas plumas, cuando uno lanza una flecha, si no tiene las plumas atrás, la flecha se cae. Es, está muy pesada, la punta está muy pesada y no puede viajar, no tiene trayectoria. Entonces se, re, se requiere de que la flecha tenga su plumaje atrás. Entonces, yo voy a explicar por qué yo alego que ese también es un tipo de flecha. So, I'll explain why I'm, I'm arguing that it's a type of arrow. Um, and the, the symbols that, that I was showing you in the bottom, see this, this right here? This is uh, Koyoshauki. And if you look at her headdress, it's very similar to the little, the little feathers there. They're like these feathers that are on the bottom of this fletching, right? So, these are like, like lunar, lunar feathers, right? Feathers of Koyoshauki. Right, it's like, you know, part of that, that arrow fletching. Entonces, este es, este es un concepto de la luna que se llama Koyoshauki. En su, y en su tocado de plumas, aquí vemos que se, tiene el símbolo que está grabado aquí en, en esta parte inferior de, de, del rostro del centro del calendario, ¿verdad? Y tiene sus flechitas, su, sus, sus plumitas aquí lunares. Okay, uh, over here on the side, we have um, a symbol of Venus, right? This is a symbol of Venus. El de arriba, 
El de arriba acá es un símbolo de Venus y, y lo que distingue a Venus es un ojo. Vean el centro aquí, tiene un ojo y tiene como una, como, se puede decir como una, una ceja aquí sobre el ojo, ¿verdad? So we see like the, this Venus symbol is characteristic of an eye with this type of uh, bra, you know, like a, like, you know, like a type of eye bra right, over it. Now there's another symbol right here in the, in the center, in the bottom, and we see another version of the eye, and we see the little bra right there again. Now look at the top of it. It has that little arrow tip there, and look at the bottom. It's like a smaller version of what we see in the stone calendar here in the, in the, in the sunstone. It's like a smaller version, right? You see like a, like a little fletching right there, a little smaller version. Now, this is a, another name for Venus is up here, like you can see, is Totonami. Totonami, right? And a, a meek, meek is an arrow, and Tona is a kind of heat, right? Uh, you know, some kind of heat. So Totona is like a heated arrow, an arrow of heat, you know? Entonces, estoy explicando de que la palabra toto, Totonami es una palabra para el planeta Venus, y meek es una flecha, y Tona es como calor, como energía. Entonces, Totona es como mucha calor, mucha energía. Entonces, es una flecha de, 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 de bastante energía. Entonces, ese era el nombre de Venus. Entonces, a Venus lo llaman como una flechita de, de calor. Entonces, aquí vemos que en el calendario azteca, en el mayor, tenemos otra flecha de otro tipo de calor. No tiene el ojo en el centro, pero tiene el sol en el centro. Entonces, es otro, otra, otra flecha también de calor pero no es el calor de Venus, sino el calor solar. So here we see like another arrow, and the center doesn't have that little eyeball that's associated with Venus. Instead, it has like the sun. So there's like another type of heat arrow. It's a solar arrow, you know, that has trajectory, right? Venus's movements, they have trajectory. You know, we see Venus in the east, we see Venus in the west. Our ancestors, they follow this trajectory, uh, you know, and mapped it out. And they associate it like uh, rain cycles to the movements of Venus. Now the sun, it has its trajectory also, its movements to the sky, and that was also regulated and documented. And our ancestors celebrated important ceremonies like in the solstices and the equinoxes. So again, it's like another type of heat arrow. This is another type of de flecha este, de calor. Entonces, este anillo es, tiene como estos estos símbolos aquí de, de, de grandecitos aquí alrededor, ¿verdad? So, we, like, if we look at the face as one, the, the first ring, the second ring has these, these, these squares around it, you know, and it has all these other little symbols around it. So, that's like another, uh, we can see it as like a second ring, right? Entonces, esta segunda parte aquí es como otro anillo del trabajo. Si vemos el centro como rostro central, como el primer anillo, Aquí donde están estos cuadros y estos otros símbolos, hasta las garras, even these claws, they're all part of the second, uh, the second ring, right? And we can see it in that way, you know, just for study purposes at least. Um, so, I don't know, did anybody have any comments about that central phase before we move on to that, that second little ring here? Uh, ¿Alguien tiene preguntas o comentarios de, de la cara central antes de platicar un poquito de, de este segundo anillo? So you're saying that the center basically represents the sun and then the uh, bottom part of it with the uh, plumaje that represents the uh, moon would be, uh, before that, in between would be Venus, right? Right. And so after that, at the bottom, that would represent Earth? So then, uh, like... That, that little circulito in the, in Oh, the that little circulito? That's a whole other little discussion that is part of that second ring, but yeah. Um, We'll definitely get to that what that dot might be there you know oh, okay um, but yeah so definitely See, the only the only because the idea came to my head i mean because you have you would kind of have it already in order you know what i mean yeah like the, sun. The, the sun and then venus and then obviously the moon and the earth you know right, Pero, all right. yeah it could be seen as that yeah i see that's what you're saying Gracias. Yeah. okay yeah. anybody any other questions or comments All right. Perfect. Okay. Um, now, these four here, there's like a, there's a legend called La Leyenda de los Soles. 
right? Like of the legend of the of the of the sons, right? And they argue that there's five sons, right? Like each little square here represents like an era, right? Like an era of time. And then the sun here in the middle. Oh, well, first let me back up. Each little square has a symbol with four dots. You see those four dots like in the corner on this one? They're like, this is a hecat, the wind has these four dots. This is a jaguar with four dots. One, two, three, four. And then we got the rain symbol over here. One, two, three, four. And then we, over here we got the like a water symbol, like a dish, like chachi with ikwe. And we got one, two, three, four. So, and then we got this, this uh, large face here. Uh, and it's with this big, like a olin sign, like a big, like movement symbol. And that one has its four dots too. You can see part of it here, one, and then two, and then three, and then four. So a lot of uh, historians, they say there's five suns, el quinto sol, that we're in the quinto sol, we're in the fifth sun. Um, but I disagree with that. And I'll, 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 uh, I'll explain why in a moment. But entonces la mayoría ve como esas como, como eras, como que son cuatro eras aquí, y la quinta era es la central, como este sol, es parte de un símbolo grande de movimiento y también tiene sus cuatro puntos aquí. Porque cada, cada fecha que está aquí documentada tiene sus cuatro puntitos, ¿verdad? como parte de una fecha calendárica. Entonces, este, esta imagen grande aquí en el centro también tiene sus cuatro puntos. Son grandes. Este punto acá, este acá, otro acá y otro acá. Son, son, son cuatro. Entonces, muchos alegan de que eran como cinco eras, como que estábamos en el quinto sol. Yo, yo estoy... Un, uh, en desacuerdo con eso, con lo que yo he encontrado, pero quería mencionar lo que popularmente se entiende. I wanted to explain what's, what's popularly uh, understood, right? Uh, even though uh, I think uh, I, I kind of I proved different, right? Now, we're not going to get into a lot of detail, but the first era right here of the Jaguar, there's a legend, right? There's a legend that was, uh, that was documented. There was this friar, uh, and he was like uh, the first archbishop of Mexico. And um, I, I think his name was Andres, right? Uh, and he's one of the first that documented like some of the legends from, from the elders, right? After the, after the fall of Tenochtitlan. And that's one of the older, uh, the, uh, older stories, you know, older sources. Uh, that they have of this gentleman, uh, of, this, of this legend. So he says that the first son, the first era was by Tezcalipoca, right? He, he was turned into the sun and that one lasted for 13, 52 year counts. So our ancestors, they counted their years in groups of 52. Four groups of 13 made a big bundle of 52 years, right? And that's called the Shumolpili. So he's saying that this count lasted for 13 Shumolpili, which equals 676 years, right? Like, so this box right here with this Jaguar was a 670 year period. Um, so, uh, so, but in the legend, it kind of talks about these four brothers, right? You have the brother Tezcalipoca, you have the brother Heka, you have a brother Tlaloc, and you have like a, a woman, uh, Chalchihuitique. So these are like these four characters in the, in the story, right? So the first one up is, is uh, Tezcalipoca, right? And, and uh, this jaguar at the, at the side of the head right here, it has a, a, a little Tezcalipoca, right? Um, and uh, you know, wanted to take position Quetzalcoa wanted to be the next son, right? And uh, according to this, uh, you know, he turns like, uh, you know, he tried to destroy the humanity that, that, that's, that's uh, at that time. And these large jaguars come out, like this Calipoca sends these large jaguars to finish humanity, you know, like to, supposedly to destroy uh, that, that creation. And then um, it's Quetzalcoatl's turn, right? Uh, and Another symbol for Quetzalcoatl is the Heka, this wind symbol, right? And according to this legend, again, uh, it talks about the sun, the Quetzalcoatl was a sun, and he also lasted for 13, 52 year counts. 
That's another 676 years because 13 times 52 is 676. And this time when, uh, when uh, Tlaloc was trying to like uh, take over, they say that they made the wind, they picked up this powerful wind and it started blowing humans off of the earth, mm -hmm. you know, destroying humanity that way, you know? Um, and, and some of the humans turned into, into apes or, or, or monkeys. And they hung on to the trees, you know, and they stayed. Um, and so the next one up is Tlaloc, the rain, right? And Tlaloc, uh, he was a son, but listen to this part. His era only lasted seven 52-year counts. So that was only like seven times 52. That's 364 years. So let's keep in mind that the first era was 776. The second era is documented to be 776. And then here, the third era is documented to be 364, according to this account, right? Uh, by Olmos Andres. Uh, entonces, en español rapidito, so ya vamos en la tercera era. Según que la primera era era cuando el sol era un, uh, por Tezcalipoca y duró 676 años. Y luego se terminó porque salieron jaguares y acabaron con la humanidad. Y luego era la era del viento. Y esa era duró también 676 años, 13 grupos de 52. ¿verdad? Y esa era terminó con un viento poderoso que destruyó la humanidad y algunos se convirtieron a monos o a changos y se agarraron de los árboles. Ya estamos en la de lluvia, ¿verdad? Y esta era es más corta. Dicen que nomás duró 7 grupos de 52 años, que es 364 años. Y cuando empezó a caer a lluvia, cayó lluvia de fuego, ¿verdad? Y eso fue destruido en la humanidad. Algunas versiones dicen que los humanos se convirtieron a aves, a pájaros, y, y se salvaron de esa manera. O de ahí vienen los pájaros, pues. So, some, some uh, versions say that humans, some humans turned into birds and were able to, to flee from that falling rain, from that fiery rain. Uh, so, hence, that's where, like, you know, legend for, like, where birds came from. And then we have the next one is Chalchihuitique. Chalchihuitique. Um, it's the water on earth, right? It's earth's water, right? La, 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 el término chachibitique es, es el concepto del agua, pero es el agua que está en la tierra, ¿verdad? Y Tlaloc es la, el agua que baja del cielo hacia, hacia la tierra. Entonces, esta era, this, this sun, it lasted for six 52-year uh, counts, which is 312 years. So this one is also a shorter one, right? So uh, esta era también... Fue de seis grupos de 52 años, que son 312, ¿verdad? Entonces, un poquito más corto. Entonces, esta uh, era terminó con inundaciones, ¿verdad? Se inundaron la, la, el mundo y ahí terminó la humanidad, ¿verdad? Esa era, ¿verdad? Y unas personas se, fue, se convirtieron a peces, right? So, this one is, is, is said that Chalchihuitique, uh, you know, flooded the earth uh, and humanity was affected and destroyed that way. That sun was destroyed, uh, and humans were transformed into, like, some of them say that they transformed into fish, right? So, uh, so we have these first two are 676 each. We have one down here, the, the Tlaloc, that's 364, and then we have Chachi with Equi, that's 312 years, right? Um, now, this is something what I noticed when, uh, when looking at this. I noticed that... Um, that the first two were 676. But then I noticed I got, I got Tlaloc and Chalchihuitique because they're said to be like a duality, right? These are two concepts of water. One's water that comes from the sky and one's water that's on earth. And when I added there the years, when I added Tlaloc's years and I added Chalchihuitique's year, look what it gave us. It gives us 676 years, right? So then I was thinking like, wait a minute. So this is like one era. This is like the second era. And really what they're calling the third and the fourth era, really that's like another group, like another era of, 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 of 676 years, right? So then if the sun, if Tonatiu has his chance, that would probably, I'm, I'm guessing here, that would probably run another to be the fourth era, you know, uh, which makes sense with our cosmovision, you know, the four elements, the four directions, the four Tezcalipocas, it would make sense to have the four eras of life, you know, of, of time, uh, as opposed to five, like most historians communicated. 
I think most historians don't see the connection between Tlaloc and Chalchihuitlicue. They, they don't see that perhaps these two are a complement to each other. And mathematically, we could see that they are a complement to each other because together they make, they make uh, like 1352s, right? Uh, instead of breaking into different parts like this, they, you know, so, you know, I, that's why I, I kind of say, and I think it was meant to be four eras, you know, even though there's more representations, but I think those two water ones, they go together, you know, uh, and together, like if we multiply four times 700 and 676, that gives us 2,704 years. Which is interesting. Check this out. That's fifty-two shumolpili. So that's like fifty-two times fifty-two. So it's like a mega, mega, mega time count, you know. So our ancestors, they they got groups of thirteen and they made fifty-two years. They will get two groups of fifty-two and make a group of one hundred and four years. Elisely bundle, and then here we're seeing like a mega, mega bundle of like fifty-two, fifty-two year counts. So like fifty-two shumolpili. So Again, mathematically, I think it kind of, it goes with like, with the way our ancestors organized uh, their years and organized time. So also, like you notice that legend, um, how it talked about humanity being destroyed and all that. I think, uh, I think our ancestors were communicating evolution, right? I think they were talking about evolution, not really like a, like a, like these are doom dates, like, oh, the, on this date, the world ends, you know, oh, it's a doom date. I don't think that's the, the objective here because on the first era, like when, uh, when, when Tezcalipoca was around, the humanity of that time, they described the humanity being giants, like giant humanity. And then by the time Quetzalcoatl is the sun, humanity was smaller in size and they ate different things. Like the first humanity, they ate like acorns. The second one, they ate, like, I believe it was like uh, these aquatic plants, you know, or, or and pine cones, you know, pine nuts, you know, and then each, each, each one, until it gets to the last one, they're eating corn, right? Uh, so at the same time, you're seeing this evolution of humans from these giants to these, like, to normal sized ones. Uh, the food that they're eating, the staple crop is changing through these generations. And, uh, and so it has a lot of that too, you know, like this, like this evolution of, 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 of humans that we've changed through time compared to how we were before. And our diet has been changing through time. And that's also documented in that legend. But a lot of historians don't talk about that aspect. They focus on this destructive component because they're very fascinated with that destructive component to it. Any comments, questions? Now, um, I was talking to you about, like if we look, uh, we have this four, a haircut, and then we got, uh, you know, four ocelot, right? And then we got, you know, four kiawi or rain. And then we got like four water, you know, four at. Uh, you can't tell right here, but if we look at this upside down, this is a dish right here, like a water dish. And in it, it has this chalchiwi equal, this water concept to it. ¿verdad? Son las cuatro eras, ¿verdad? Este, de viento, de, 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 de tezcalipoca, del jaguar, de la lluvia y del agua. ¿verdad? And then that, that, that one that they call the fifth one is this olin, this, this little outline that I made here, that's the olin symbol, the movement symbol. And then four dots make it four olin. So these are like four dates, you know, the dates that have a four with it. Um, now, I was thinking about it. I'm like, like, like Veronica, I also work the, the time counts, you know, the tonalpoali. Um, I like to calculate the tonalpoali. So as a, as a tonalpoki, a day counter, I was like, these aren't years. These are actual days, right? There's actually a, a, a four heka date on the calendar table. 
There's also four Jaguar on the calendar table, four rain, four water, four movement. Like I could actually locate these on a calendar table. You know, that, that's where my mind went. Let me check out what I see when I do that. You know, let me plug them in into a table, right? So, um, and uh, down here, you could see that the sun right here, look at this image of the sun down here in the bottom. And the bottom of it, it has a, the number four olin. So that's kind of like a date that's associated with the sun, right? That's like another date. Look at, look at, this is the sun sitting on his bench right here, right? This is, uh, this is plate 71 in the Codex Borgia, right? And the date that's under him is this is the olin date and it has these four dots, two here on this side and two on this side. They're all attached with the string that connect to the to the olin to the movement. So this big one here is an olin with these four dots. So again, the person that was asking earlier, can it be something else in the center? Well, the four olin is right here with the central face, you know. And again, uh, if we look at this Codice of Borja, the four olin is down here with the sun right here up on top. So again, I think that's another more evidence that it's probably inclined towards being a solar representation there. Entonces aquí vemos el, el eh, se puede decir que la fecha cuatro movimiento, cuatro only, es el, la, la fecha del sol. Esa es su, su, su fecha calendárica del sol. Es el calendar date of the sun. Y aquí también vemos cuatro only, porque este, este, este símbolo grande es de only, de movimiento. Y ahí está la figura solar en el centro. Entonces, igual, otra más evidencia de que quizás el rostro central tiene que, que ver con el sol. This is another sculpture that the Mexicas left behind. And look what they left. They left four rain, four heca, four ocelot, four water, four at. There you can see the image better. You see that dish with like a little female representation of Chalchiwit Ique, like a four at symbol. And then again, right here in the center, another four olin. So it's just a different style that they communicated. Whereas in the, in the, in the Aztec calendar or the sunstone, they made it like more in a circular way, you know, but they're giving us that same info, right? They're documenting that same info, you know, but in a different format. Pues vemos aquí estas, estas fechas, ¿verdad? De cuatro lluvia, cuatro viento, cuatro agua, cuatro jaguar, cuatro movimiento. Y esta es otra escultura de los mexicas, ¿verdad? Y vemos que es lo mismo que se ve en lo que es el calendario azteca en el centro, nomás que es, es otra, otra, otra representación de lo mismo. Any questions, comments? Hey, we see, uh, it seems like the, some people are having some comments and questions on, on the chat board. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you, you have on your right. Okay, let me see. Uh, uh, oh yeah, with the little dots in the corner. That the cello on the on the other piece it doesn't have it in the in each corner. Yeah, I don't know why they did that. You know, that, that's another thing. I mean, when I don't know, I just don't know. I don't want to invent any uh, you know spectacular explanation behind it. But I don't know why they why they didn't put the four dots in the jaguar one. Right here they are. You know, right here we can see the four dots right here. Look around the jaguar. It has the the four are there. But you're right. When we look at the at the previous representation of it, you know, um, they're not like that. You know, we have uh, we have three down here, and then we have one over here. I don't know if because um, you know they wanted to make space for this 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 mirror, the smoking mirror with the little smoke rivulets coming out of it. You know, I'm not sure uh, you know why they decided to do that. You know, but nonetheless, it does have its four dots in there. So that's it. Still, it still marks a date for Jaguar, uh, for Ocelo. Now we Ocelo. Yeah. Thank you. Great questions. So as I was telling you, I plug these dates. Uh, oh, actually, um, so these are dates right here. Now I wanted to say something about these dates. So some historians, you know, they're all into sacrifice and to killing and like this whole conflict of death and life and. So they communicate these as being doom dates, like dates when the worlds would end it. Like, oh, 
the the Tezcalipoca era, it ended on four on four uh, Jaguar. The Quetzalcoatl it ended on four wind. Tlaloc uh, ended on four rain, and Chachiwitico era ended on four water. And the sun, the Tonatiu is gonna end on four oli. So our era is gonna end with earth and, and movement and na 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 na. And they get into this whole doom date mentality, right? Um, now, I. I, I say that's ridiculous because the legend, it doesn't even mention these dates. What do you think about that? The legend does not even mention the date for Ocelo or for, uh, like, he doesn't talk about, like, the number four with it. It talks about the Ocelo sun, the, the, the Tzcalipoca. It talks about the Heka being the sun. It talks about Tlaloc, the rain, being the sun. It talks about Chachiwitico being the sun. But it never mentions like a little numeral four, right? So uh, again, I think a lot of historians, they're like bloodthirsty. They like those bloody stories they sell uh, and, they, and, they, and they promote that, you know? So there's not no codice or no colonial writing that I ever came across, you know, in my 20 some 30 years of studying this, I never came across like a, like a not even a colonial source that talks about these uh, four, you know, dates, these, these dates with the four like this. So uh, again, that's something that uh, I, I like to challenge. That's true. So what I did, being a, a day counter, I got, you know, I just got the first table of the cuenta. Agarré la primera tabla de los años, de la cuenta, and I plugged in these dates, right? I plugged in four all in, uh, and I plugged in four at, for Ejeka, for Ocelo, for Kiawi, and then I marked over here, uh, for At came out again, and then for Ejeka came out again, right? Some of those were repeating, right? Those, and I was like, okay, uh, that's interesting, right? And I was trying to see if there was any kind of like pattern to it, right? So once I looked at it a little closer, I noticed that between this, first, let's say this first, let's say, let's look at the all in first. From this all in right here to the next date, which is four water, four at, this yellow, this yellow highlighted part, that's 52 days. That's five trecenas. And then from this four water to four ejeca, like this green period right here, that's one trecena, one 13 day period. And then from the next date, four heka to four ocelo, again, it was 52 days, right? So like five trecenas. And then from that four ocelo to the, to, 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 and then I was like, okay, but then there's this empty spot. So I plugged in what would be next. Like, okay, there's this spot here that would have been four, four mikisli, I mean, four masa, right? But it's, that's not documented on the stone. But just following this logic, Following this 52, 13, 52, 13. And then I'm like, okay, let me run this. Uh, after this 13, it, it lands on a four again. And then I ran those 52 again, and it took me to that next date again, four rain. Then I ran the 12, and it took me to, it took me to four malinali. And then I ran the, the 52, and it ran, took me to this four quetzpali. Uh, then I ran the 13, it took me to the four only. I ran the 52, and it took me to this four up. Uh, for water again, and I ran the 12, and it took me to this uh, for Ejeka, right? And then I ran the 52 again, and it kind of ended on this side, you know, at the beginning over here, and it, it would be with the four Quetzpali. Now, these blue ones, I put those, right? These are not recorded on, on what they call the, the Aztec calendar or the sunstone, right? But these four, uh, that was like the continuation of this pattern, you know? So I was thinking like, wait, I don't think this is coincidence that it's like 52, 13, 52, 13. And this pattern will run. And I started running it because there's 13 calendar tables. Beto knows there's 13 calendar tables that we need to count the days. And I ran this pattern through the 13 uh, calendar tables. And it ends like right here. Like, like it, you know, the, the, the last one, it ends. The last one is a 52 count that ends right here with the Kali. And it sets it up for the what's filing right here. So again, uh, I think the central image 
uh, let me see this. I think this the central uh, figure here, the central dates right here. I think they're giving us some kind of time count, right? Um, but look at so on one aspect, they're giving us this year count. Remember, we're talking about the 676, 676, 364, 312, and then we added it up, and then we added with this other one. So we get this big mega year count, and at the same time, they put these four dots in there, right? So when we plug that into a, a table, like a calendar table, uh, we get like some kind of day count. So we got like a year count, and we got a day count. Now the question was, why? Like, what was this day count for? Like, why would they mark this day count? Why, why was these numbers so important, these dates so important that they marked it on the stone? Well, guess what? I don't know that. I don't know why, you know, it beats me. I just see the pattern and I saw that there was some sequence to it, right? But I couldn't tell you what it was used for. I don't know if I had to do with agriculture or the observation of something else. Uh, but I don't think our ancestors put those dates there for aesthetic, for beauty purposes, you know? Uh, I think it's some type of count, as we can see, uh, that was used for something. I don't know, you know? Um, Entonces, esas fechas que tienen cuatro, los rojos, son los que vemos grabados en el calendario azteca. Y las azules, yo las puse porque dentro de la lógica matemática, era lo que faltaba para que corriera esta cuenta y fluyera a través de la cuenta del tiempo. Y, y vemos que cada uno empieza con un cuatro, ¿verdad? Entonces, lo que yo di, sugiero es de que estas fechas nos están dando, es como una abreviación de una cuenta del Tonalpoali, ¿verdad? Y no sé para qué se usaba esta cuenta, no les voy a mentir e inventar algo, ¿verdad? Cuando no sé, pero lo que sí sé es que hay un tipo de patrón calendárico que los abuelos marcaron. Cuando ellos pusieron esa escultura con los puntitos, no era de casualidad o no era para que señalara bonito, sino era, estaban grabando un registro. So they're recording some kind of register there that they're conveying to us, to the, to the observer, right? Uh, so I start taking a pause here. Let me, let me, uh, let me, um, maybe uh, kind of stop sharing for a second. Now, when we talk about the Aztec calendar or the Tonal Mashot, it's one of the Nahuatl terms we use for it, the Tonal Mashot. Um, I think the Tonal Mashot is a, a beautiful piece of art, first of all, right? But it's also another way that our ancestors documented different types of registers. So it's like a, it's like an ancient, uh, almanac or an ancient piece that just documents different types of registers. We have the solar register. We have these registers of these mega years, 676, like 13 year groups, you know, groups of 13s, you know, and then we have these little four numerals that give us this, this other Tonalpoali count, right, that we don't even know what it was used for, right? Uh, we're not sure what it, that count was used for, so, and, and then when we go to the next ring, that's when we have the 20 days, right? The 20 day count. That's another register. And then the farther we go out in each ring, there's a different type of register and different registers. And it is like all the way out. It has different day registers. Some are like Venus counts. Some are like solar movement. Some are Venus. Some are lunar. And it just like, so I look at this piece of art and I start seeing like, wow. Our ancestors in one piece, they gave us like an abbreviated representation of like these multiple registers that they were aware of, that, that, they, that governed their lives, you know, that they kept track of to, to live accordingly, to, to harmonize, you know. These registers were used to harmonize with the natural patterns around them and the cosmic cycles around them too, you know. When you get your calendar name, Right, when you get your calendar name, that name you're getting like you're getting linked, you're getting connected to some kind of natural phenomenon or astronomical phenomenon. They're not all just cosmic phenomenon, like you know, uh, some of them are terrestrial phenomenon occurrences happening. So, when we get our calendar names, we have like you're getting connected 
to one of these rhythms, some of these registers that our ancestors observed on earth, you know? Uh, so we get our calendar names and they're like big, you know, nos quedan grandes, and we, we work our whole lives to try to live according to them, you know? Uh, so, uh, you know, like in a nutshell, I mean, we just saw a little bit of it, but if we just keep going outward, we're gonna see just different types of registers, different types of time counts that our ancestors worked, you know? Uh, and, 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 they, and, they, and, they, and they crafted it onto this, this piece of stone, you know, that weighs like 25 tons, right? That's like more than 50,000 pounds, right? That, that, that they, you know, it's like 12 feet in diameter, you know, um, and they just sculptured the stone. They etched all these registers, you know, onto the stone, uh, like saying, hey, this is what governs us. This is what we understand about time and, and, and about movement and about our relationship and how we harmonize with, 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 with our, our, our internal, our, our, our ambience, our environment, you know, uh, on earth and, and, and our cosmic band that, that just changes and gives us information. Entonces estoy diciendo como en resumen de que lo que llaman el calendario azteca si es una obra de arte, ¿verdad? Es una piedra de, de 12 pies de diámetro y el, Pesa 25 toneladas, son como 50 mil uh, libras de, de peso. Y los abuelos grabaron en esa piedra diferentes registros. Registros solares, registros de años, registros de, 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 de cuentas calendáricas del Tonalpoal y como, como cierta manera de, de contar el tiempo eh, eh, en nuestros calendarios. Y si vamos afuera, cada anillo que sigue es otro tipo de registro que los abuelos grabaron allí. ¿Y qué nos, quieren, qué, nos, qué, qué nos quieren dar a entender? De que ellos se gobernaban y vivían de acuerdo a esos movimientos naturales y esos movimientos cósmicos. Y las fechas calendáricas que usamos para nombrarnos también nos dan propósito y nos conectan a un tipo de ritmo natural, a un tipo de ritmo cósmico, ¿verdad? Y es una manera de integrarnos con este movimiento, esta existencia que tenemos. El nombre nos da propósito. ¿verdad? El nombre que nos damos, el calendario nos da, nos queda grande y nos toca toda la vida de trabajar ese nombre para poder vivir armónicamente con nuestro ambiente, con la tierra, los ritmos de la tierra y los ritmos de los cosmos, ¿verdad? Entonces les digo, este, mientras más tiempo me den, eh, 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 si se pudiera, ¿verdad? Este, pudiéramos ver otros anillos, ¿verdad? Y seguir este, esta discusión de los diferentes registros. Y la verdad, no hemos terminado el segundo anillo. Todavía quedan fechas que están uh, en este registro que podemos ver qué implican, qué significan, right? So we're not even done with that second ring, right? There's still little dates that are encrusted in between. Uh, you know, one of you mentioned that circle that was in the bottom, you know, and these other dates that are around it. So there's all these other little dates and information to it that give us more registers, more like historical records too. Uh, so, again, I think like uh, if, if we could revisit or uh, whatever, you know, days you guys can offer me for your time, uh, that's what we would see. Like the farther out we would work our, in these rings, uh, you would see that they're just different types of registers. Uh, and if we don't get to go through the whole thing, you know, because of time and other things going on, then uh, just know that even with the little bit that we saw from that center to that second ring, we're just seeing time counts, registers, legends, information, stories, you know, of how our ancestors crafted time. And I want to say that time, if you think about time, that's a human construct, right? Time is a human construct. And time, every culture in the world, every people, they organize time to their own understanding of their cosmovision, right? And our ancestors, they came, they came up with this system uh, I don't want to sound nationalistic, right? But it's very precise, right? It's, it's, it's pretty much unrivaled, you know, uh, throughout the world, you know? Um, and there's three main counts, you know, that, that I think we should have, keep in mind. Uh, you know, we think about, a, think about a time clock. The clock, it has that hour hand, and then it has the minute hand that moves a little quicker. Then it has a second, right? The second hand that moves even faster. Right, so if we think of that clock, the three of those movements 
they're giving us a read of time, right? I can ask you how many seconds passed, and you could tell me how many seconds, how many minutes have passed. You could tell me how, how many hours. You could tell me. And then together, those three, they're giving me a read of time. So our ancestors, they worked the Shupuali count, which is the year count, kind of like if it was the hour count, right? Cosmically speaking, they worked these 52 year counts that were the year count. And then we had the months, right? That were 18 months of 20 days, right? Those are the, 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 the veintenas, the sempualilwi, you know? And we had that, that time count going, the 20 day symbols. Every time the 20 day symbols repeated, it was a new month. Next 20 days, a new month, new month. You have that count. And then you have this Tonalpoali count, the one we used to name ourselves, that runs in groups of 13 weeks, like 20 weeks of 13 days, I'm sorry. It's 20 weeks of 13 days. And you have this count, kind of like the second hand, you know, that, that's just moving a little quicker and it has its own time. But together, these counts, they give us a read of time, you know, the, the, the Shupuali, the year count, the, the months, the veintenas, the, the, the trecenas, and they start giving us a, a whole different read of time. Uh, so our ancestors, they organized it that way. Is it the only way to organize time? No. Is it the, the, the you know, oh, you know, and our, and our ancestors, they created so much that it's hard for people to give us credit. You know, they start saying that the aliens gave us this knowledge, you know, or that the aliens crafted our cities. Uh, you know, people come with all these different angles. And I don't think that's, I don't think that's adding to us. I think that's subtracting. Is that they're saying that our ancestors didn't have the audacity, the observational skills, right? The mathematical reasoning to come up with these sophisticated time counts that are precise, you know? Uh, so again, you know, our ancestors were, were, were masters of time and master astronomers. And I think this stone that they call the Asta calendar, it's, uh, it's one of the registers that they left for us to, to, to enjoy and to, to see those registers that, that existed, at least some of them, you know. Entonces, en, en resumen, este muy breve, diré, diría que las cuentas de, que está, están registradas en el calendario son, uh, es una cuenta cultural, porque cada cultura en el mundo documenta el tiempo como ellos lo entienden. Entonces, nuestros ancestros documentaron el tiempo de esta forma, de una forma muy precisa, muy única. ¿verdad? Eh, y esta cuenta de tiempo, lo quiero decir, eh, nomás lo encontramos en México y en Centroamérica. No lo encontramos con los indígenas del norte, no lo encontramos con los indígenas de Sudamérica, nomás se encuentra en México y Centroamérica, ¿verdad? en esa región, ¿verdad? Es donde se encuentra esta cuenta de tiempo que es muy única. Eh, culturalmente es nuestro patrimonio. ¿verdad? So this is part of our cultural heritage. You don't find these time counts, you don't find them above Mexico. Like the northern, our northern brothers here, the natives of, of the northern areas, they didn't, they didn't organize time that way. And neither did our brothers in South America, the Incas and all that. Yeah, they had calendars. Of course they did. But they didn't organize it like, like, like the, 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 the Mexico territory and what they call uh, Central America. That, like that region of territory, this was our time count. That's part of our cultural uh, inheritance and, 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 you know, uh, something that we need to, I think, really, you know, value and connect with. So, uh, I don't know, like I said, maybe if, if we have time for another class in the future, maybe we could finish that second ring or maybe look at possibly a little bit more, you know, beyond that and uh, take it from there, you know. But I, hopefully this was like a good introduction to uh, the kind of registers that our ancestors worked ancestrally in ancient times. Este, quizás en el futuro podamos terminar ese segundo anillito y ver un poquito más, si, si nos permite el tiempo, si, si lo pueden con su horario, pero por lo menos yo pienso que esta plática nos sirve como una introducción de cómo nuestros abuelos documentaron estos registros ¿verdad? de tiempo en esta obra, ¿verdad? esta obra de arte. Anybody have, I don't know, Vero, anybody have any... Uh... I, I, hi, uh, thank you for presenting. Um, I would ask if... Uh... Uh, for me, I would like some stuff uh, to read ahead of time for the second ring. So that way, when we have you back, we could have more of a discussion and dialogue to answer maybe some stuff that that you would think that would be in you and Beto and the, everybody else here in, in this chat room because everybody um, reads some awesome stuff about, um, you know, we can come prepared and read, have read some stuff and that way we can have a good 
dialogue and discussion and answer questions because uh, uh, the math part, I'm not going to lie, that, that shit was overwhelming for me right now. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, so just throwing that out there. All right. Thank you, brother. Gracias. Hey, uh, I just uh, thank you, Luis, so much. Barely hear you. Oh, you can't hear me? Ah. Uh, it's just a beautiful reminder of just how amazing and beautiful our culture is. Um, and yeah, I just, it just fills my heart with so much joy to hear all of this and just, again, get reminded and it reminds me of my dad. And, yeah. Thank you, sister, for your words. Thank you. Hey, Witi. Um, so, you know, I just, again, just like we started off, you know, I want to thank you. Um, you know, we go way, way back, you know, um, and just, you know, at times I've been, like, I'm grateful for folks like you, you know, at times I've picked up the count and done the calendar and got all brushed up and, I, and then I let it go and it cycles through and we got other duties and we got dansa, we got family and, you know, but it, it makes me proud that there's people that are, are keeping up with it, you know, that are able to share the information. And Thank so um, it, it makes me happy to just kind of feel your humility in terms of the knowledge because knowledge oftentimes is, is taken and, um, from my perspective is, is used as the, as I don't know, a, a form of power. Like now I know it all and everyone else is beneath me. And so I, I, I don't see you that way. So I appreciate that of, of you. And I appreciate that, uh, that, that humble approach to what you know and what you don't know. Right. And that openness. So, so thank you for that. Thank you for your time. Um, you know, if, if you'll, if you're willing, I mean, I, I think uh, I, I may speak with her for, for everybody, but uh, we should certainly have additional sessions I do agree uh, with, with Marcus that, you know, um, maybe some, and that may, may lie, we'll, we'll have to do some, some work between uh, yourself, Edo and myself uh, and, and all of us to hand out some materials to the group. You know, some of these things, again, it's, it's kind of reawakening that, that knowledge that, that I have in there. And it's, you know, like, okay, it's all coming back, but I can't speak to everyone else's knowledge. And so it's going to be difficult to just kind of pick it up. So um, I think, yeah, we, we need to um, put our heads together and see what material we could pass out. And so that could stimulate some good conversation and make the class um, easier to pick up. But thank you. Definitely. All right, brother. Thank you. So it seems to me like we're, we're, we're kind of coming to a close, but if we want to continue with everybody just kind of sharing some words of what your experience was, um, or if you want to, I don't know, just show appreciation and however you want to. But like Dale said, um, I, I would love, you know, and, and this is what we had thought to begin with, is to, is to share several sessions with you um, for sure to see how much we can learn. And then maybe we can discuss um, how many sessions you think it would take to cover all the rings um, and then as a group, as a circulo, we would have to discuss what day of the week would work better if we don't wanna continue to push back our, our practicas that we had agreed to, to so we can you know, um, start that again. So it just depends you know, how, how many sessions we need and then, um, and then we can figure out the days that work better. Um, but, but I wanna personally thank you as well um, very much so for sharing this information and you know it takes decades to to learn and then even more so you know your entire life and then there's still a whole lot to learn so um, right. you know and, and and I feel like I've just scratched the surface too even though I've been learning or been trying to learn for a number of years but even with your presentation it's like okay whoa well okay there's all this information and there's always learning going on and so just to share with the rest of you that the learning never stops you know there's always going to be something to learn um, and so that's the most beautiful thing that I'm enjoying about this is just the greatness and the genius of our abuelitos and our abuelitas and that we we inherited that and how amazing and beautiful that is and that we can take ownership of that and be proud of that and and just soak up as much as we can y'all like soak it up because 
um, knowledge is power and, and we have to share this with our familias too. You know, we have to try to um, put back the pieces because we were so fragmented as a people that it's going to take everybody to put those pieces back together as much as we can. So Tlaso Kamatli for that, hermano. I'm going to pass it on to the rest. All right. Thank you. Pues sí, no, pues muchísimas gracias. Thank you um, for the group for coming together like this and aprendizaje and nuestros maestros for, um, you know, and you, thank you um, for joining. And, and I'm left with a lot of questions, right? And I'm, I was very eager to put them out right now, pero pues yo creo we put them on a shelf. For now, este, but two questions I think I just want to put out there, and I don't know um, on what format we could um, put our questions on the shelf. So, like, maybe so we can address them or, or como sea, verdad? At least yeah. to just express them. Right. Um, but, but principle, two questions that I'm thinking is, like, the significance of when the stone was created and why was it created at that time, verdad? And the other question is, how was the knowledge shared? Especially talking about what was us right now sharing knowledge. So when it was created and then ongoing from that, how was that knowledge shared? Because I've heard about like colegios of that time, ¿verdad? and then like even things about like how there was a hierarchy of knowledge, y algo así, ¿verdad? Um, and so to debunk or who knows to those kinds of notions, ¿verdad? Yeah. You know, that's a great question. And uh, that second ring, um, it talks a little bit about like the foundation of Mexico, Tenochtitlan, and a couple other important dates of the Tlacuanis, of their leaders. And there's that central ray that we talked about that's on top of the face. It points at a calendar date in the top. That's 13 read, 13 Aka, right? And, and, and we can figure which 13 Akat that was and, and during which leadership, which Tlalcuani was around at that time, you know, uh, you know, during when it was uh, created. So it's looking like, uh, like the 1400s, you know, like, uh, which again, uh, you know, that's part of the presentation as well, where we would, you know, definitely answer those questions. And as far as like, how was knowledge communicated in the back, in the past, our ancestors had uh, in, in this country, schools didn't become mandatory until like the late 1800s, right? So that's like not that long ago, like a little over 100, 150 years ago or something, school became like, uh, you know, and more recently it became like mandatory, you know? Yeah. Well, in ancient times, every, every Calpuli, every like neighborhood, every barrio, they had their own schools, Right, they call it Nemachtiloyan, like the place where where, where people study. Uh, and then uh, there were centers where they called Cuicacali, where you would study canto, like songs. And then you had the Mishquacali, where you would like come and do like performing arts, you know, like performing arts, like acrobatic stuff, poetry, things like that. And then we have uh, the Calmeca, which were kind of like the higher education, like, heard you know, of, yeah. yeah, like the, the Calmeca, you'd have like maybe high school, early college type level. And then you have the Tlil Calmeca, which is like, you know, where the ink is work. Like the Tlili is ink, Tlil, like black, Tlil Calmeca. And those had like, a, those were had a lot of libraries and, and, and a lot of resources. So to begin with our ancestors, they had inst educational institutions, right? Uh, a lot of times we romanticize like, oh, we make a fire and we share knowledge orally. That was a tradition. Yeah, our ancestors did, communicate knowledge orally, but we weren't that simple either. We also had schools, we, our ancestors wrote books, we had libraries of books, we have paintings, murals, sculptures, I mean, uh, uh, the knowledge was conveyed. And then the danza that we do, that's also part of that knowledge that was conveyed. Every movement, it represents something, you know? It's like, a, like how when I hear people talking about yoga, each pose, if it has a meaning, you know? Well, so does each movement in danza. You know, every movement in danza has a, has a meaning, a symbolism, and, and the rhythms that we're playing, the beats, they're also marking certain time patterns that go with these natural cycles. So it was documented in many ways, 
and it was expressed in many ways and taught in many ways. And it was just part of our ancestral uh, way of life. Uh, kids started dancing since they were little. The Tlautuanis, like the, which would be like the leaders of the state, were dancers. The governors were dancers. The police, everybody was, a, it was a dancing society. It was a society of danzantes. And throughout the year, every month, it celebrated one aspect. Like some, some months celebrated like the curanderas, and they were running that ceremony. Others might have been like a warrior emphasis and the warriors were running that ceremony. Others were emphasized on the children and they were running that ceremony. So it's like everybody got a turn to be celebrated and honored, you know? So, uh, and so I, this knowledge is just was like intricate, in, in, in like very connected to, to the people. Uh, I know we see movies like Apocalypto and stuff like that, you know? And they make us think of like this hierarchy, like the, the leaders were trying to keep knowledge from everyone else or they're trying to take advantage of their knowledge of astronomy and keep everybody else ignorant and scared. Uh, but we don't see that in what was left in the historical documents. We don't see that in the institutional buildings that were left in the ancient cities, you know. We see that school was school, dance, song, the arts, it was all interwoven as a way of conveying and preserving knowledge. Um, so, I mean, like in a, in a basic uh, way to answer that, but, uh, yeah, knowledge was, was conveyed in many ways, brother. Orale, gracias. Yeah. Um, just want to say thank you for um, your time, for coming to, um, you know, on Zoom, even if it's through virtually. Um, but I'm very anxious for the knowledge. Um, I've been woken ever since, you know, I was introduced and then um, I'm just anxious and, you know, ready to just, um, you know, kind of take it all in and, you know, keep learning. Yeah, that's the beauty of it. Thank you, sister. Thank you. Hi, uh, I want to say thank you. Thank you for uh, the workshop you gave us today. Um, something that stuck out to me right now i know i look very dark right now you can barely see me but uh um something that stuck out to me that goes back to when i was in veronica's class that you said right now cultural cultural heritage and the time count and how it only it's only in mexico and central america before i went to a four-year university um I didn't connect to it. I My parents are from El Salvador. And for a long time, I didn't see myself, I would say six years ago, seven years ago, as becoming a danzante or even connecting to um, Mesoamerican culture. But right now, again, when you mentioned how the time count is essential to Mexico and Central America, it reminded me, me, seven years ago, six years ago, as a student, wanting and I come from and actually connecting to it and that's where my journey began connect with my culture and who am I and that's what sparked that interest in me and learning more within my family and sparking that with my parents and having those conversations and that's how I found out more about who I am and where I come from and why I look the way I look because growing up it was hard for me to even accept so why do I look the way I look why don't I look you know, uh, white, why am I darker? Why am I darker complected? Why is my hair curly? And now as a woman that has expanded her knowledge and I yearn for the knowledge, like Sarai said, it's something very important to me now and accepting who I am and where I come from and how it became a full circle for me. So I'm thankful for people like you that share this knowledge and specifically with people like us that want to learn our heritage, want to learn our culture, want to learn where we come from. So thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, sister. Brian, I think you're saying something, but you're muted, hermano. Can you hear me? Yeah, perfect. Okay. I also wanted to say thank you for me. Um, it's like, I felt the same thing I felt the first time I danced. Um, like, it was like my grandma was with, with, was with me. Mm. And um, 
since I'm biracial, it's really hard. Sometimes I feel like I don't, I can't like claim this space. So it's like reaffirming that I'm belong, like I belong here. And so I really want to thank you because I was feeling that and I can identify with like with Gina and said I were saying and this like I want that you know and I feel it within me and there's like this insecureness sometimes for me so it's, it's just reaffirming that I'm where I'm supposed to be. Thank you brother that's beautiful. Cada quien se debe de despedir y con unas palabras como siempre terminamos el círculo. So every, each one of you just keep it going um, so we can go around the circle. So everyone goes. Okay. Um, so, um, Maestro, like, honestly, that's something that was just like Maggie said, it's something that reminds you, like, you know, you've studied and you know, life passes on or whatever, but uh, it did remind me of like, just how every time I walk into somebody watching that show that you hit the nail on the head when it's like aliens, something that we, we don't profess or that isn't ours. And just thank you for reminding me of that. Like every time I walk into any place that's watching that show, I'm like, why? And then they just call me mad. But you know, <laughs> so thank you so much for your time, and just thank you. I'm eager to learn way more. Thank you. It's, it's an honor. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Hey, Yvonne. Okay. So, um, thank you so much. Um, uh, yeah, it, it was a little overwhelming, but the things that I was able to latch onto, I was just like, whoa, this is mind blowing, you know. Um, I feel like every time, like even on Instagram, I would always like, <clears throat> you know, share like some of your like daily, what do you call it, forecasts or uh, daily accounts? Is that what you call? <clears throat> and like I used to get like a lot of amazing responses. People were like, dude, like that's you know. So I, I don't know. I just um, I'm really excited and looking forward to um, learning more. Um, it, every time I learn about these things, I feel so like much more solid and in my um my indigeneity and i feel like you know sometimes it's hard walking through these racist institutions and i'm like you feel like ah you know but yeah. um learning this it's like makes me feel taller it makes me feel powerful so thank you very much i'm at the i want to say thank you you know um i haven't been posting my my um the dates the counts for for a while um I think uh, for a moment, I kind of felt it wasn't being appreciated, you know, like uh, a lot of time would go into doing that and, you know, finding the, the images and, you know, mm -hmm. the, the things that go into it. And, uh, mm -hmm. and you know, if I post, a, like I, if someone posts a picture of them at a party, you know, people, it'll get like hundreds of likes, you know, and then somebody, you're you're working like hours to bring a little time count and then, you know, people overlook it, you know, uh, which is like, I know it's not about likes and stuff like that, but I was just like, well, maybe this platform is not the best for it. You know, maybe, uh, you know, this platform, uh, you know, social media I'm referring to, maybe it wasn't, uh, it's not really ready or, 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 or wanting uh, as much of that, but Yvonne, your comments, you know, they kind of make me reflect on maybe the importance of putting this info out anyways, uh, because there are listening ears and eyes out there, you know, that, that benefit from that. So thank you for that reflection also. Lisi, I appreciated them. I saved them all. And I was like, I'm going to oh. go back. I'm going to write this in my notebook. Oh, sister, thank you. Study like, I, I saved them all because I, I, I appreciate it. Like it just is a good reminder of the time that I'm in and the day that I'm in. And it's a good day. It's a good thing. Or what I would do is just, um, you know, take a second before I started my day to kind of reflect on the information yeah. that you shared. And mm -hmm. I appreciated that. That's the idea. Thank you, sister. Ooh, I got to get to it. Mateo. Um, just want to say thank you so much. I'm super excited. The whole 
table, math table that you had pumps me up. This whole like algebra solutions equals this plus that, that just gets me really pumped up and how like, um, for some reason it just was coming to mind on how, um, how we were created to like, you know, from our nose to our chin, from our chin to our stomach, from our stomach to our toes, how we're equally all, it's all equally created the same way that sort of the calendar is, you know, like, um, I don't know, it just, that what was coming to mind how um, humans, us, were, were a perfect example of, of maybe those four etapas, how we went to those, we went through those four etapas and now are created perfectly. And now with your whole math thing on like, it just, I tripped me out and I loved it. I love looking at the table. I love the pattern. Uh, I can't wait to the next class. Thank you so much. All right, sister. Uh, for me, yeah, again, just uh, what everybody said. Thank you. Uh, beyond appreciative. Um, just kind of thinking on the historical piece. I mean, right now, there are people who, you know, the Confederates who are so knowledgeable about their statues and just like their heritage. Um, and when I think about it, I'm like, how much do I know about what I have? You know, what that represents me as part of where I came from. Uh, just need to know, like, you know, I, I need to know about my stuff. Um, I need to know what's going on. And so I just appreciate that knowledge. I've always seen it since I was little, you know, here and there about that, uh, about the calendar and everything, but you know, really, what do I know? And so I just appreciate that knowledge and just, you know, glued to, to hearing everything and, and having that breakdown just uh, feeds well. So, gracias. My honor, brother. Hi, I wanted to say thank you also. I can see the passion when you talk about this and I feel the passion. It's very contagious. And I'm very excited to learn more about culture, about heritage about everything so i am really happy i was able to make it and i will be here every single time if i can thank you again. thank you for you thank you sister hello uh yeah like everyone said uh thank you appreciate the knowledge you're sharing appreciate also the humility that you have like Dale said, you know, acknowledging that you don't know some things and you're willing to be vulnerable in that space while you're sharing all your knowledge. Um, I just really appreciate learning more about our heritage, our, our, our cultura, our people. It's amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Carnal. I appreciate your words. Tlaso Kamati, thank you for your time and, and, and also for Beto for bringing this knowledge to us, for being able to not only revisit, but uh, gain some new knowledge and some new details about our own cultura and some of the things that get uh, mystified um, about our own past and to really uh, solidify it and, and like the science behind everything. I think it's really, really powerful. Thank you, brother. Thank you both so much. Um, you know, it's, it's, I've only been doing this for so long and, um, I feel like, you know, without knowing the proper context of what I'm doing, it's, it's, not, it's not really ceremony until I really know what I'm doing. So thank you so much for, for helping bring me that ceremony by wanting me to learn more about it. Thank you so much. And sister, I just want to say, even if you don't know much or like some of the dances, we don't know what everything means in it, uh, you know, it's like something that we're just always connecting and bringing more knowledge into it. Uh, but it is ceremony. I would just say that the more we know, the more we savor it, you know, the more we savor it. So we could look at it like that. Um, Mateo. Uh, buenas noches. Este, um, uh, gracias por su tiempo, por su enseñanza de paso a paso de, de lo que es el de lo que nos acaba de mencionar de que nos acaba de mencionar este que la verdad yo no sabía este a ver si con el paso de, de los lunes que podamos o no sé cómo nos vaya como nos vayamos a acomodar para que también nos siga enseñando un poquito más como que nos quedamos así como 
picados. Este, sí, sí, <risa> sí, como que queríamos saber un poquito más, pero ya habrá un, un tiempo extra para que nos pueda enseñar más. Si se puede, gracias por su, por su tiempo y por su paciencia. Un oh, Mateo, clásico Mati. Gracias. Oh, me tengo. Me tengo. Gracias, Maestro Witz. Um, there's a lot of info. I'm um, excited to continue listening to you speak and just, you know, letting us into your mind. Este, it was a couple, maybe like a month or two ago, I, I actually drew a piece of the sandstone. Ooh, beautiful. <laughs> you know, and it's so much, so much detail into that. And, you know, just hearing you speak just gives it so much more meaning. You know, and I appreciate you. And going back to that whole social media thing, man, like you hold this like higher energy that does not belong in there, bro. So you don't don't even trip about that and, you know, continue what you're doing. Muchas gracias. Thank you, brother. Is there anyone who hasn't gone yet? Um, thank you. Thank you so much for um, the information. And sorry, I was a little late. I was at my kids back to school on Zoom or whatever. So thank you so much for the information. It, it's overwhelming, <laughs> um, but it's, it's really, it's really helpful. And it makes me feel more connected, especially right now as I'm kind of not connecting as much as I should to Danza and stuff as I'm being overworked and preparing Zoom lessons and study guides. And it, it's a nice reminder to come back to this because this makes me feel replenished and refueled and I need that reminder. So thank you. Thank you so much. Right, for sister. Thank you. Did everyone have a turn? I yeah, think so. Theo? I was just saying that I think that was it. I was looking at the the, the attendance. I think that's everyone. That's Dale, everyone. We can't really hear you. It sounds like you're slurring, like you've had one too many. <laughs> <laughs> it was slurring, like it was stretching out your voice. <laughs> okay. Can beat the <laughs> este, um, okay, no, well, thank you again. Muchísimas gracias, Tlazo Kamati. And Amidla, like, sister. Thank you. And communication to kind of figure out how we're going to set up the follow up workshops. But I really yeah. um, feel like, you know, I'm getting the strong sense that everyone wants to continue with these enseñanzas. And so I think that we should. Um, so we'll be in contact about that. Is that okay yeah, with you? Definitely contact me and, uh, you know, we can work something out. You know, if it's not Mondays, uh, we can figure what other day will work. Uh, you know, I mentioned to you before that Thursdays also, Thursday evenings, I'm free. Um, so, I mean, you guys can talk about it and see what works. Okay. Right. By right, a I don't know if you all know, but like on the bottom of your screen, there's a little happy face that says reactions. Just if you can use the thumbs up if, th if Thursday evenings work for you, just to kind of get a visual real quick and we can still talk about it. If you don't have the little emoji, then use your thumb like Juan is. Okay. Um, and then we'll have to, uh, Maggie and Theo, you're not using a thumb or uh, up or down, so. Does that, that wouldn't work for you? Oh, how to be them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we'll figure something out. Yeah, <laughs> let's figure something out. Okay. Like, we'll be in touch. And again, thank you all for your attention, your your heart, your dedication, and uh, we'll see each other soon. All right, sister. Bye, brother. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Vale, vale.